Amen. Wonderful. This is going to be my final word on uh, the promises that we've been studying. Sermon number 11, actually, the 11th installment in the series and the final one. God's got another word for us. But I wrap up now with what we've heard. Not going to review anything, but uh, maybe we'll make a list of those things and put it out again maybe next week for us to have. I don't know yet, but I'd like for you to turn in your Bibles to Isaiah. The Old Testament, Isaiah, the 54th chapter is our main text this morning. And I believe God has got a word for us today that is an ending word and a beginning word. An ending word and a beginning word. If you don't mind, you look so comfortable, I hate to disturb you, but would you mind standing just in honor of this scripture, the word of God, as we read our opening text together, just a moment. Only one verse, we'll be having much more scriptures in the message, but... Uh, Just the opening verse for the message this morning is the book of Isaiah, chapter 54, verse 17. A very, very familiar verse and a beloved verse. And I want to break it down today, and I want it to be the year-end verse and the year-beginning verse. You're going to be blessed by it. The word says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. It's our part of our inheritance. God has promised us. And their righteousness, their right standing is from me, says the Lord. That's a beautiful, beautiful verse, isn't it? Let's pray over the word this morning. God, thank you for this scripture alone. And that's which is to come. That no matter what has formed against us this last year, and even though it seemed it was prospering, the Bible, through your word, breathed of the Holy Spirit, says it will not prosper. It will not reach its maturity and do what it was intended to do by the enemy. It won't work. It won't work. You've told us it won't work. And it's your promise. That's part of our inheritance. That that which comes against us will not work because we belong to you. And we we don't even have the wherewithal or the ability or the strength to fight ourselves. You said you'd fight it for us. Sometimes all we need to do is stand still and keep doing what we know to do. And you'll take care of it. God, somebody's been in a fight this year. A spiritual battle. You said that it will not reach its fulfillment. It will not come to fruition that which the enemy had planned for them. You will not let it prosper. We still believe that. Your word is true, and it's your promise to us. Because if we're a part of you, we know you are always victorious. And if you're victorious, we're victorious. We will overcome with you by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And we testify today. You've been faithful in the past, and you're going to be faithful in the future. And we will have the victory with you. Bless this message to us today as we think of how wonderful you've been and how you always give us the victory. Help somebody that might be a little bit downhearted today to leave with encouragement in their heart, knowing that you have not forgotten them, that they still are in your heart and the plan of God is going forth whether they see it now or not you are at work in our lives Lord we thank you for it bless this to our hearts in Jesus name everybody say Lord speak to me God bless y'all so much you may be seated amen spent a little bit of time with the Lord this last week or so I've been thinking of this particular message for a few weeks now and I spent a lot of time thinking about trials How many of you say, I've been through some stuff in 2012, some trials, some some testings? Come on, hold your hand up in here. If you haven't, you haven't lived. You're not alive. We've all gone through some things, haven't we? This year's trials in particular for me, and I'd say for many of us, have been filled with some unusually challenging situations, big things, intense trials, uniquely threatening ones. I mean, the kind that if it were not for God, I know I surely would have given up and I surely would have been knocked out had it not been for the grace of God. Can anybody say amen that way too? That's why I must say and admit to you, I'm glad 2012 is ending. 
I'm glad that season is ending. I'm not saying that we're not going to have trials in 2013 because we will, but I'm go- I am by faith leaving some of that stuff behind. When we step over the line into the new year, I'm saying bye-bye to that and hello to blessing and favor. Amen. This has been a year in some areas of loss for some of us. Fear that we've dealt with, confusion, questions, moment after moment when weapons literally formed against you. You can name them. Against me, against us. And I looked into the study of 2013 or what 13 meant. (coughs) I love the study of biblical numerology. We know that 12 was the number of divine government lining up. And there were some things that God was putting in order, but in order for it to get in order, it had to be shaken up a little bit. How many of you know what I mean? So there was some shaking going on. And divine order, God was setting things back in order in your lives, in the church, in many, many of our lives. And I looked then from the meaning of 12 to 13, and so many view 13 is an evil number. You know, we don't have any floors in hotels or in, in, in tall story buildings of the 13th floor, and people consider it superstitious and, and scary and evil in one part. And when I studied it, it even used the word apostasy. And I thought, well, that's a real blessing. I'm really going to preach on apostasy today. That's the kind of year we're going to have, apostasy. And I started digging in, and I said, Lord, you've got something much better than this. I I know you have something. I dug deep, and I found some significant studies. I can't even go. I spent hours on this, and aren't you glad I'm only going to give you just about four minutes of it? Somebody say, there is a God in heaven. (laughs) But there's so much I could share with you. The uniqueness of this number is is that it's not evil. It, It actually is a word that means the blessings of God. It is symbolic of the blessings that God gives to his people. Great promise and blessing coming coming from God to us. But it's a unique kind of blessing that I've seen. Uh, This kind from the number 13 is described after you have endured much warring and trial and depravity and rebelliousness and all kinds of different things that have tried to put you down. The blessing comes either in the midst or after all of that has happened. Even those things that have come against you, the weapons that have formed against you, those things that have caused divisions and decisions and wrong decisions that you have made have happened. And in spite of even some of the dumb things you've decided and done, God's going to intervene and make all things new because of his grace. How many of you know sometimes God overrides our messes? Aren't you glad for that? That's the kind of blessing that 13, because it's a strange number, and many have felt it is evil and fearful, but it's a unique time that there's a twist and there's twisted things. God will make the crooked way straight through the number 13. Blessings, results, a promise that comes no matter what happened, no matter how impossible it looked, God has the final word. In spite of all of that you've been battling in 2012 and before, weapons forming against you, bringing fear into your life and into your family, things that that you've had to face these last few years, that we've had to face. How many of you say, I faced some of those things? It's really interesting, just one little study that I looked at. Isaac was born to Abraham and to Sarai at 99 years of age. Abraham was 99 years old. When God's promise finally came to him and Isaac was born, the promise that God had given him. At 86 years of age was when Abraham took matters into his own hands because he couldn't wait on God's promise. And instead, he went to Sarai and said, take Hagar, we're going to do this ourselves." And Ishmael was born. And Ishmael, which is a type of the flesh, things that we do because we won't wait on God was born, and it was 13 years after Ishmael was born that Isaac, the promise, finally came. Just a real, and I can give you many more instances of how 13 turns into a blessing, but a unique kind of blessing where we've messed up, we got in the flesh, we made wrong decisions, things came against us, and in that 13th year, the number 13 means things begin to come together, and in spite of what it looked like and seemed like, God broke through with his grace and brought a blessing anyway. Isaac, 
was not there yet, and an Ishmael was the result of the flesh, but God brought Isaac anyway. And somebody is going to get a breakthrough anyway in 2013. It's not that you deserve it. You've made some wrong choices and decisions, but God sees your heart, and this is a year of the grace blessings that you don't earn, but you just simply receive. Now, I could go into a lot more, but that's the basic part of it. The, the promise is fulfilled, but it's fulfilled only as God can, that you can't do it. Only God. This is a thing that only God can do. How many of you have got some things that only God can bring the answer to them? You know what? This is the year that God's going to bring some of those things to pass. Look for them. Don't keep whining about them. Start some faith talk. I'll put it in the bulletin today. I'll talk to yourself. If nobody else will speak blessings over you, speak blessings over yourself. Talk the talk of faith. Talk the talk of expectancy. And in spite of what others did, in spite of what you did, in spite of what circumstances said, in spite of how long it took, 13 was the number that God moved. And in spite of even an Ishmael, God brought his Isaac that he promised. Hallelujah. Oh, that's awesome. So if you're weary, if you're in need of some rest, hold on. I'm expecting this to be a good year of God-giving promises that I had long almost given up on. Will somebody get with me on that and say, me too, me too. I'm going to receive them this year. And that's why I was driven to this particular verse as an entry point to God's grace of 2013. I'm expecting change. I'm expecting God to intervene by his grace and reverse some things. That seem like they're cemented in, but God can break the concrete up. Can you say amen? Anybody going to believe this with me? All right. In thinking about this, I was trying to pinpoint what it is about trials that particularly tear us down and defeat us. And I think the difficulty is not the thing itself. It's the fact of not knowing how it's going to turn out. You know, I can go through something. If I know at the end of it, it's going to be okay. But if I don't know what's going to happen, the not knowing, how many of you know what I mean? The not knowing can drive you crazy. I mean, even if you know something bad's going to happen, you can prepare for it. If you know something good's going to happen, you're certainly ready and resting knowing it will come out. But it's the not knowing what's really going to take place that drives us crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like in a football game, you, you can... You can lose yardage in the football game, but that doesn't really matter if you end up winning the game. You see what I'm saying? If you know you're going to win, I'm here to tell you, you're going to win. God said, these things will form. We'll talk about them. They will form, but they will not prosper. And we'll catch the meaning of that word. It really means they will not come to completion. There will be an abortion that takes place before they reach their fullness. Whoo, hallelujah. Some of you think that it's full. You know it can get worse. You know it's headed there. But God's going to come in and intervene in just the right amount of time. That's his word. It's promised to us. It's powerful. And that's what we mean when we say something has happened. They say, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. We, what do we say? It's just popular to say it today. Like, oh, it's all good. You hear people say, it's all good. What are we saying? That was negative. That happened. But it's all good because in the end, it's not, th th that's not going to mess up the whole thing. It's all right. It's all good. It's all going to work out. And we need to start saying that as people of God from the word, that even though something happens, with, that's all right. It's all good. It's all, this is not good. I'm not saying that thing is good, but it's all good in spite of that thing. It's all good. Everybody say it's all good. You got to believe that for this coming year. We got to start speaking that. It's all good. Say it again. It's all good. When it's all said and done, when it's finished, you win. You overcome. You are victorious. Hallelujah. That's the promise that I see here in Isaiah 54 and verse 17. Now, God gave this, of course, to the post-exiled Israelites. They came back to the land that God had promised when it was taken away from them. How many of you have had some things taken away from you? God will bring you back, but even though sometimes he brings you back, you don't really know if it's going to happen again. There's still fear in your heart, and you don't move in with confidence. And so they had been through so much. This was a word that God gave unto them. And let's kind of break it down for just a moment. And he speaks to them. They're coming back. Not real confident, but they're coming back. And he says, I want you to know that no weapon formed against you. You're coming home. You're coming back. You've been through a lot. How many of you say, I've been through a lot? 
Okay, God says that's fine. You've been through some things, but you get your faith up because no weapon, though it forms against you, will prosper. Now, the word weapon in Hebrew means anything used against a person with evil intent. Anything. Anything that is used against a person with evil intent. Anything that's built, made, said, done as evil against you is going to be a weapon formed against you. In other words, it will form, it will come against you. A job may be lost. A situation may happen that's not pretty. It could be ugly. A child may drift away. I'll be honest, a life even might be lost. It looks like it's just getting worse and worse and worse. But in the end, everybody say, in the end. In the end, these tragedies will do nothing but assist God to lend you and lead you to the kind of victory and prosperity that is only prepared for his children and his children alone. Some people want to be a success. There's a success of the world, and then there's a success of God because you can get rich in the world and have all kinds of things and be miserable in your heart. The Bible says the Lord maketh rich and adds no sorrow to it. When I get blessed or whatever I get blessed with, I don't want to have a bunch of sorrow in the middle of receiving those things. So there's no sorrow to it. In the end, it's going to be the kind of victory and prosperity that God has for you. There's a scripture in Joshua chapter 23. And verse 10, and it says it this way. It says, one man of you shall chase 1,000. In other places, you go, one will chase 1,000, two, 10,000. But this is, what, you know, and, and what an increase of that with one person. One man will chase 1,000, and here's the reason. Look at the rest of the verse. For the Lord your God is he who fights for you. Isn't that good? That's the only reason you can do anything good. One chase a thousand only because of God. Only because of the grace of God. He fights for you as he promised you. Now, I'm giving you some promises today, and you, all you got to do is believe them and receive them. But it's the word of God to you and the word of God to me. The Lord fights for you as he promised you. In other words, it's a fixed fight. You're in a fight, but it's fixed. If you ever watch some of these wrestling things, you go, that's, that, that's fixed. That's phony. He knew he was going to do that. You know what I mean? Some of you think it's real. You're looking at me. That, no, maybe it is. But I'm here to tell you, our fighting is real, but it's a fixed fight. God knows who's going to win, and he will fight for you. If it looks like the enemy's getting out, God will jump in the ring and stop it just in time because you are going to ultimately win this thing. You might lose a few battles, but you will win the war. That's what the Lord is trying to tell us here. God won't let you lose. No weapon. Everybody say no weapon. That means absolutely no weapon formed against you. Now, any kind of weapon can form against you. But no weapon, none of those will prosper. The word prosper is the word that means will succeed. One version says no weapon will prevail. And one version says no weapon will be final. I like that one. No weapon will be final. It's not over till God says it's over. Even if it looks like it's prospering, it's not done yet. It has not, it's going to be aborted before it finishes. Amen? You may say, well, pastor, the weapons are not the things that bother me. It's the words that come at me. Words are about to kill me. You don't have to worry about that because the words aren't going to work either according to this passage. I can assure you these words won't win either. Look at the next phrase of it there in the, uh, the, in the verse that we're looking at. It says, the phrase there in Isaiah 54, Every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Have you ever been a target for somebody's words? Everybody groan, I, I hear you. Have you experienced ridicule by somebody that just had it out for you? Could it be your righteousness, your godliness, or could it just be your personality? Whatever it is, none of us are perfect. But somebody has maybe passed judgment on you and somebody has spoken against you and, and declared you're, you guilty and they didn't even understand what the situation was and you're already guilty and they don't even know what it's about. You ever had that happen? Those who speak against the child of God like that will not have the last word, the Bible says. Look at 2 Thessalonians 
chapter 1 and verse 6. This is an interesting passage. It says this, since it is a righteous thing with God to do what? To repay with tribulation those who trouble you. Is that interesting? I think I better watch who I trouble. Because that means God's going to allow me to be troubled if I trouble them. If I gossip and if I cause division, then it's going to come back to me. It, God sees it as a righteous thing for him to do it. Not for me to do it. Not for you to do it. But for him to do it. It's an interesting verse, isn't it? Someday those who's, who reject mercy and re resist grace and don't have it for anybody, it's going to come back on them. Because of what the manner you sow is the manner you reap. And God says that this is the heritage of the Lord, that these things happen. So the righteousness of, 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 of our lives is from God, not in ourselves. So we let God do the getting back at folks. We don't do that, do we? Do we? If anything, God says that, that it's righteous for him to do it. He does it in his way. It's not righteous that we do it. So we leave things to God. The reason we forgive is, yes, for them, but more for us, because we don't want to carry around things we weren't meant to handle. Amen? So anything right in your life, anything repossessed, anything that has been restored to your life is from the Lord. It's not your righteousness. He makes everything right. Our righteousness is from him. Our right standing, anything right in our life is from God. Can you say amen to that? So it's grace. We don't deserve it. But he promised it anyway. That's the power and the glory of the gospel. That's the, the difference of being a Christian. I don't have to make it happen. God will make it happen if I'll just follow him. Imperfect as I am. I mess up every day, don't you? But I'm trying and I'm open and God knows that. And he will make a way when I can't make it. Are you with me? Christ fights for us. It's Christ in me, the hope of glory. Amen? Now, if you're in God, you're victorious because God's victorious. If God, if God overcomes, well, you overcome because we are as he is. As he is, we are in this earth. And if he is healed, we should be healed. If he is blessed, we're blessed. We are as he is. Now, Romans chapter 16 is another verse I want you to look at real quick. And I want to actually look not just at the 20th verse. That's the one I wanted to show you. But I, I'd like to look at that 19th verse just real quick as well. Romans 6 and 19. Oh, 16. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Romans 16. I looked at that and I said, that's not it. <laughs> Romans 16. And let's look at verse 19. This is just to give you an idea of what God says about your enemies and some of the things that have formed against us. Again, how many of you had some weapons that have formed against you this last year? Okay, this is for you now. Listen up. First, it talks about your obedience has become known to all. You know, you can't just claim these promises and not, try to walk, and not walk with God and be obedient with God. That's our part. You can't just say, well, I'm claiming victory and peace, and God's going to work it all together. I'm living like the devil, but I love God. And he'll, well, no, you've got to do some things, too. You've got to obey God. You don't have to be perfect, but you've got to make the attempt to obey God and walk in his word. Amen? So it says your obedience, verse 19, has become known to all. You're really trying. This is wonderful. Therefore, I am glad on your behalf, but I want you to be wise to what is good and simple concerning evil. And that's very difficult in our generation to be simple concerning evil because it's just in our faces constantly, isn't it? I mean, you have to be looking for it. It's just there. But he says be simple concerning evil. We're letting our children see things too quickly. We're letting our children become adults. And we have kids giving birth to kids. We have children leading children. We need to keep them simple concerning. Oh, I want it. They need to learn. They need to grow up and mature. No, not too quick. They don't. They'll learn soon enough. We need to prepare them in the word of God and build their character. So when they do see these things, they'll know what to do. So be simple concerning evil. And then he tells us why we should fight and why we should go against evil and for good. Why we should make that stand. Verse 20. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. And how's it going to happen? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is going to be with you. God's grace is going to be upon you. The grace of God's going to sustain you. And I know you've had weapons formed against you. I know you've been in battles. But God, the God of peace, God's go God is a God that brings peace out of all this confusion. He is going to crush Satan under your feet shortly. 
Hallelujah. When's it going to happen? Shortly. Everybody say shortly. Now, I don't know what that exactly means, but I, I, I'd say soon. And I'm going to say sooner than you think. Sooner than you think. You have no idea what God is up to, but he's not going to let the devil kick you around and just ruin everything in your life. He's going to crush Satan under your feet shortly, soon, sooner than you think. Whew, I like that. He'll be crushed. That's not good news for him, is it? He'll be crushed. And here's the shocker, under your feet. Under my feet. Think of all the stuff that the devil's done. Th think of all the, the things that have been painful that have tried to get you off track and defeat you. Come on, amen. Y'all know what I mean? Do I have to name them? I don't have to name them. You don't want me up in your business. But you, you have them. You know I have them. We have them. And all the attacks brought on by Satan, your foot will rise up just by walking, just by moving ahead, and you will crush him if you'll just keep moving on. It'll, he can't, if you just stand still and give up, he can't get under your foot. But if you start walking, you're going to step on his head, and you're going to crush him. You just keep moving. Keep those feet moving. Stay faithful. Let tears fall down your face, but just stay faithful, and you're going to be crushing him under your feet as you move forward. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. God says he will make it so. You know, the first promise in the Bible is found in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. And it foretells that Jesus will have the final victory and will crush his head, the, the serpent's head. And he will ultimately annihilate the enemy, annihilate the devil. That means he'll be rendered inoperative. If you step and crush his head, he can't think, he can't, he, he, he can't uh, cognitively plan anything, those plots, those, those the seats, all those things that he planned, they're going to be no more. There's a day that it's going to be no more, and he's going to be cast into the lake of fire prepared for him. Revelation 2014 calls it the second death. Aren't you going to be glad when there'll be no more devil to mess with us? Hallelujah. So what do I do about all this stuff? First of all, I'm encouraged. I'm encouraging myself. I've had weapons formed against me. Have you? Whew. Money weapons. Emotional weapons, all kinds of weapons. But I'm reading the word. You got, folks, you got to stay in the word of God. No wonder we're exasperated. If we're not in church, we're not in the word of God. That's the only thing that's going to get us through is the word of God telling us this is real, but it's not going to prosper. It's real, but it's not going to prosper. It feels like it's going to prosper, and that's why I have to hear this. That's why you've got to hear this. The Word of God is the only thing that will take us out of the gravitational pull of the yuck of this world and tell us the real truth. Amen? There's a difference between fact and truth. The fact is that we have weapons formed against us, and it looks like we're going under. The truth is no weapon, no matter how it's formed against you, is going to prosper. The fact is it's there, but the truth is it's not going to stay there. Man, woo, that's awesome. That's awesome. It's not going to last forever. But the more we look at it and give in and talk about it, the bigger it gets and the longer it stays. We nurse it. We magnify it. We nurse it. We feed it with our mouth. And I know it's hard. Sometimes it's exhausting being good and exhausting having faith. And if we can rest, if we can get to the place in 2013 where we're resting in the grace of God and we're just receiving the hardest thing for me to do is receive. Hardest thing we can do is receive. I don't have to crush his head. You know, he'll be under my feet. But the God of peace was the one that's going to crush him. Amen? It'll be under my feet, but the Lord's going to crush him. He's going to be under me, but I'm not going to have to crush him. God will do it. God's going to take care of you. I just want you to know that God is going to take care of me. God's going to take care of us. And we've got to hear this. That's why I come to church. That's why I preach. That's why I open my Bible. Because sometimes it doesn't feel like that's going to happen, does it? But I'd rather believe the Lord. How many of you have seen him literally step in before that thing crushed you or took the life of somebody? And he actually stopped the thing before it happened. We, we've seen it. We know it, and we hear it, and yet sometimes it's still hard to believe it, even though he's proven himself time and time again. I challenge you as you end this year and move into the new one. Start with a scripture like this and believe God.
We all know we've all faced trials, and we're going to have some new trials in 2013. But I believe it's going to be the year God's grace is going to quicken some things, and we're not going to have to tarry in some of them. What do I do in the meantime? Now is my time to believe and praise him and, and honor him in advance for what he's going to do. Not just what he's done. Anybody can thank God for what he did. Now, it's a good thing to thank God for what he did. But I need somebody in here that will give what T.D. Jakes calls a crazy praise. It's crazy to praise God when nothing's going right. It's crazy to thank God and dance all over the church when all hell's breaking out. Now, anybody, when you, get, when you win the lottery or you get somebody to give you uh, $5,000 or whatever, anybody can come in here and shout hallelujah. That don't take a saint. Anybody can get happy for a little bit. I'm talking about when you don't see it. His credit ought to be good for you. I know it's coming, Lord. And I believe it, and it will quicken it. We'll, we'll quicken it to come when we join with him and believe with him. You know, I was thinking about, uh, about the fact that, that, that we don't know in our trials. That's the thing that, that freaks me out. I just don't know what's going to happen. We had this event financially in the church that took place. And, well, well, I just don't know what's going to happen. And you have to put it in the hands of the Lord. Not knowing freaks me out. How many of you are with, just like me? I was reminded when the kids were young Often we would just on a Friday night or whatever, we'd all pile up in the bed together and we'd get popcorn and we'd watch a movie or something. Just all of us pile up, just being together. You know what I'm saying? Just being together. Now everybody's too big and doing their own thing. We'll watch it, but nobody piles in bed together anymore. They hog the bed too much. But we'd watch movies and I have to admit sometimes we'd watch some of those thrillers and, and scary ones sometimes. Uh, uh, just, you know, we did. Some of you might not like that, but I'm just telling the truth, too. We would, the kind that, you know, oh, my God, ah, I can't look, oh, my gosh, you know, that kind. Of, have you ever watched movies like that? You say, my God, Pastor, what's the matter with you? I, well, I'm telling it like it. we've done that. My kids like them, and I kind of like them. Sorry. <laughs> so we'd watch them. And I always, the biggest, loudest mouth, ah, you know, of anybody, you know, and they like to laugh at me. They'd always, you know, make fun of me and that kind of a thing, but I didn't care. I was enjoying the movie. In fact, people don't like to go to movies with me because I talk in movies. Why? Ah! And Chris said, stop it, Dad, stop it. Or if there's something bad, I go, oh, no, oh, my God, you know, and I'm embarrassed. And, and I, I, I'm a little bit vocal. You know, I'm kind of dramatic in the way I speak and the way I talk, and, and I'm that way. And so I don't go to movies a lot. And as soon I try never to go to anything that's got bad stuff in it, in all honesty. But sure as I go, I'll go to the theater, and I'll see four or five people. From, Pastor, how you doing? God bless you. Good to see you, man. It's wonderful. Uh, what movie are you going to see? I tell them what movie I'm going to see. And I go in, and then, oh, I told them I'm in here watching this. You know, I about freak out because I know I shouldn't be watching it. I'm telling everything. I'm just telling it all, all right. But me and the kids were watching this movie, and this one time, uh, you know, everybody's freaking out, and I was just sitting there just la enjoying them freak out. And they looked and said, well, how come you're so calm? Because I'm never calm on those movies. And I said, well, I've actually seen this before. <laughs> and I know what's going to happen, so I'm not freaked out because I know how it's going to end. Well, when did you see it? You know, and they, they got all ticked out about it. But, you know, I was thinking about that. When you know what's going to happen, you don't freak out. Like when you don't know what's going to happen. When you don't know what's going to happen, ah, ah, you, you're freaking out. But when you know, you just kind of sit there and go, yeah, I know that's happening, and I know y'all are freaking out, but I know how, it, well, I know how it's going to end. It's going to be okay. In fact, he's going to turn on him. That guy's going to be gone in just a few minutes if you only know. Just relax. And I wished I could tell myself that, and I could tell you that when the things try to scare us in life. It's just a scene to raise your blood pressure and to get you all uptight. But in just a few minutes, soon, when will the, the, the enemies be crushed under our feet? When? Soon. Soon. Not shortly. It won't be long. Just, just hang on and he'll be crushed. The whole thing will can turn. Anything can turn in just a matter of a minute. The whole scene can have a different atmosphere. They start playing the violins. It's totally different atmosphere. Hang on. Don't give up. We've got too many of God's people giving up. Somebody says, what church are you going to now? I'm not going to church. There's people that are just dropping out because they can't. This, we are a last day generation. And we're going to have to have some oomph and some 
take it and keep standing kind of a spirit. I know it's hard. That's why we need not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. We need each other. And that's why I'm not going to play games in this church. We're going to talk about the real trials, but we're not going to wallow in them. We're going to say, yes, they're real, and yes, it hurts, and yes, I'm crying, and I've been fearful, but I've read my Bible, and I know who wins, so I'm not going to freak out. I'm going to lift my hands this morning. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to glorify his name, and I'm going to sing, I'm moving forward, Lord, and my past is over. Can somebody say amen to that? That's the kind of people that God's looking for. Not perfect people, not people that that are always up. We sometimes get down, but we get up. Just don't stay down. Nothing wrong with getting down. Just don't stay down. You're a human being. Don't let the devil condemn you. Just get up. When, when, When you deserve the grace and the love of God the least is when he'll give it to you. He'll give you the most when you, when you feel like you deserve it the least. And that's when people stay home. Oh, I had a rough week. I didn't, I'm just going to, no, that makes it worse. Come and watch God give you the greatest service you've ever had when you didn't even pray and you didn't even believe. Just walk in here and give God a chance to love on you and tell you he understands that you are flesh and that you're weak. And he wants to empower you and strengthen you and lift you up even though you don't deserve it. Give him a chance to love you back to the place that you need to be. He did not come into the world to condemn you but that you might be lifted and encouraged and strengthened doesn't mean he overlooks sin doesn't mean he overlooks obedience but he understands who you are and what you're going through and he wants to give him a chance to love you back to wholeness that's the God that we serve talk to people that aren't in church well I've messed up I've blown it up God's not intimidated by that We have such an idea that God's just ready to wipe us out. No, God's ready to bless you if you'll just give him a little bit. Just come and say, Lord, I messed up. He'll lift you up. He'll put his arms around you. If your son or your daughter came to you and said, Dad, I messed up. I can't do it. Would you say, that's right, you didn't do it. Now just sit down and shout and don't even try again. Is that the kind of parent you are? You didn't say that. What would you say if your son or daughter came crying and said, I'm not even going to try? Would you encourage him to try again or would you just tell him to forget it? Try again. And this time, here, let me help you. I'll come along and help you. You'll get it by yourself in just a minute, but let me help you just for the, let's get started again. Do you think that you're a better parent than God? Would God not come and do that with you? Would he say you've messed up? You're canceled? You're out? Just sit over there. Don't even bother to go to church today. You're, you're no good. You blew it. No. Come and tell him you blew it. Tell him you feel bad about it. You don't know what to do. And he'll say, we're going to try again. But this time, I'm going to help you. And you're not going to be by yourself. Let me partner with you. As you move into this year, don't try to do 2013 by yourself. He makes all things new. And he'll take the weapons and all the things in these pressured days that have formed against you. And he will fight for you. And he'll say, enough is enough. Turn this thing around. It's over. It's not going to prosper. I'm believing for some moments from God to say, okay, that weapon that's been against David Smith, it's against Destiny Church, against the people of God. It's over. It's over. Now, sometimes I want summer to be over before it's over. It's too hot in Dallas. Oh, I can't wait till winter. And now here in the winter, I've heard somebody say, I can't wait till summer. But you just can't speak the, the seasons out of existence. You just got to go until it's completed. And when it's completed, and it will be completed, <laughs> a new season, we sang it this morning, a new season is upon us. And God often operates with calendars. I'm not saying that absolutely everything's going to end. I'm not saying that. I'm not a prophet this morning. I'm just telling you principles we can live by. God gives us opportunities to believe fresh and new and have a new start. Take it today. Take it today. And know God is not trying to beat you down. He'll go alongside you, put his arm around you, and say, I know you messed up. Let's do it again. This time, let me help you. God is a present help. In the time of trouble. Don't leave God out. 
of these troubled days that we're facing. God will see you through. When your strength is weak, God says, I'll take it from here. You rest. I'll do it. Amen? Can we trust him? Can we believe the scriptures that we read? Let's end this year with saying, Lord, I, I didn't follow you all the way. I didn't believe you all the way. But I'm going to do my very best to include you more. And when I believe the least, I'm going to seek you the most. I'm not going to seek you when I've got it all together just to try to impress you. Because you're not upset and you're not freaked out by my weaknesses. You know me. And if I take my weaknesses to him, instead of, we take our good stuff to him. Take the bad stuff. He can handle it. He will help you. And you will overcome. Amen. Let's stand together. Hallelujah. I enjoyed the word this morning. I don't know whether you enjoyed the way it was preached, but I just enjoyed the word. I needed it. I hope you did. You know by now I don't ever preach at you. I preach it at us. I preach with you. I needed to hear that these weapons are not going to prosper. Didn't you need to hear that? It won't work, devil. It won't work. It's a fixed fight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Is there anybody in this house today? I'm not going to necessarily have you come down or any of that, but you're just saying to me right now, Pastor David, I received that. I've been going through some things, and I'm receiving that my season for that is going to be up soon, soon, shortly. The enemy is going to be crushed under my feet regarding this situation. And I just lift my hand today and say, I've received that as a word from God for me. And it's going to be a new year in 2013. I know I've got trials, but some of the things that I have just hung on, it's going to end. God's got an ending point to it, and I'm believing for that. Hold your hand up and just wave it right now. I believe that. Oh, yes, so many of us. Activate your faith. Now, now lift the other hand and just open your mouth and say, Lord, I praise you because you're a faithful God. You're a good God. I don't even know how you're going to do it. I don't know what's going on, but I thank you for God. We overcome. We win. Thank you, Jesus. Just open your mouth and praise him. Thank you. You're a good God. All the time, Lord, I praise you. I magnify you.